Right, now let's take a closer look at the COVID-19 developments on the local front, especially in light of the recent spikes in daily infections, as our Soa mentioned earlier. I have Choi Min Jung here in the studio. Min Jung, welcome. Thank you for having me. Right, so Min Jung, I hear the highly transmissible Delta variant is the dominant player on the local front. Tell us more. Right, last week, South Korea saw more than 3,300 variant cases, and all but one were attributed to the Delta variant. When looking at locally transmitted variant cases only, the Delta accounted for 100% of all infections. On top of this, Korea has reported a total of nearly 20,000 breakthrough infections. This is equal to 0.074% of fully vaccinated people. Most were in their 30s and those who got the Janssen vaccine. I see. Now, also, Minjong Health authorities here have reiterated their concerns over a possible twin demic, right? Right. So on Wednesday afternoon, in a, in a briefing, they once again expressed concerns over a potential uptick in the number of cases fueled by a drop in temperature. So in, it's almost November and we're approaching winter, and health experts say it could allow the virus to spread much more easily than during the warmer months of the year. On top of that, we're also approaching the flu season, so authorities are not letting their guard slip. Let's take a listen. COVID-19 and influenza are respiratory viral diseases with similar symptoms. When a patient with a fever visits the hospital during the winter, it's more difficult to differentiate the viruses. We ask the public to actively participate by getting vaccinated against influenza as well. And there's a third factor, Halloween. It's that time of the year when young people go out to mingle with friends and let, hair, let their hair down. Right. Well, given the words of caution by authorities here, hopefully the public will partake in safe and responsible celebrations. Meanwhile, Minja, what is the latest on our inoculation front? Right. So until now, seven out of 10 people in South Korea have been fully vaccinated and most are adults. But the country is now forging ahead with vaccinations for teenagers as well. Among 16 and 17 year olds, more than 62 percent have booked their vaccine appointments and 28 percent have received their first doses. For those between 12 and 15, just under a quarter have made their bookings. As of now, the country has not authorized vaccinations for kids under 12. Meanwhile, over in the U.S., FDA advisors voted unanimously in favor of approving Pfizer's vaccine for kids aged 5 to 11. Now, turning our focus back home, Samsung Biologics on Thursday began distributing Moderna vaccines produced under contract here in Korea. This is the second time of type of COVID-19 vaccine to be manufactured and used locally by Korea. Some 2.4 million doses will be supplied to the country to vaccinate people in the fourth quarter. Right, Minjung, that is good to know. Now, one final question before you go. What can you share with us about treatment efforts? Well, the government signed a contract to purchase COVID-19, oral COVID-19 treatments, um, enough for 400,000 people. This is 10 times more than what was originally planned. Korea has been negotiating with overseas pharmaceutical companies with the aim of bringing in oral treatment drugs early next year. The details of the latest agreement will likely be announced on Friday. Currently, Merck is awaiting for approval for its oral antiviral treatment Molnupiravir from regulators in the U.S. and Europe. The company has also decided to share licensing for the treatment with a UN-backed nonprofit organization to allow more companies to manufacture generic versions. The licensing agreement is expected to expand access to the drug in more than 100 countries. Right, more than 100 countries. All right, Min Jung, thank you for that coverage. I'll see you on Friday. Thank you.